Hi, Martin here. Today I want to talk to you about converting your nine and a quarter Chrysler rear end from drum to disc brakes. What I got here is a uh, rear end out of a 2000 Dodge Durango RT and I purchased it because it had the 392 gears and the track lock. Now, of course, I wanted disc brakes and uh, finding one with disc brakes and 392s and a track lock, pretty hard to do out here. Um, I'm just not finding it. So I thought I'd just do it the hard way. And when uh, looking into converting it to disc brakes, and these are going to be off an 03 Durango, and uh, it isn't just bolt on. In fact, this is probably the hardest disc brake conversion I've ever done. Um, but don't let that scare you because it's going to be done. And I'm going to show you how to do it. Now, one of the first things I'm going to show you is the what you're going to need when you're at, let's say you're getting this from your donor vehicle. So not only are you going to get the backing plates and the calipers and the rotors if you want. Uh, personally, myself, I'm going to get, let's say, some power stop slotted and drilled rotors uh, for this conversion. So I'm buying that new. But you're getting all of that while you're at pick apart, the brake lines, uh, e-brake cables, pretty much everything, okay? But you also want to bring your sawzall or a, a bandsaw with you and uh, do a little cutting. And I'm going to show you the steps that I went through because what happens, um, this is what I discovered. You know, I th when I found out, oh, this isn't just going to be bolt on. And the first thing I discovered was these backing plates. There is no right or left. So to, and then you notice they have a different, you know, a, the bolt pattern right there. So if you don't have a right or a left, what they're doing is putting this flange on 180 degrees out on the other side. So, to make that work, well, I was thinking, okay, that's easy enough. I could maybe re-drill the existing flange or re-drill these backing plates to make that work. Well, that would have been great, but that's not the only problem. The flange on the disc brake axles is... 48 millimeters back from this surface right here where on the drum brake it is 32 millimeters and uh, that's quite a difference I mean that's not going to work because your rotors are not going to be in the correct place to operate so you've got to remove the flange and replace it you know I mean there's no way to take off the original flange and just move it because you're going to end up destroying it to get it off of there but uh, I'm going to show you all the uh, tricks to uh, doing this and uh, what I've gone through so far and uh, I'm going to do a like probably a little series on the whole swap you know putting the uh, Durango axle in a Dakota with the 392 gears and the disc brake conversion so so like I was saying, I'm going to show you all the steps you got to go through to uh, get everything you need. And what we're going to start with today is these flanges right here. And how to retrieve those off the donor axle that you're going to get your disc brakes from. All right. Well, let's get started. All right. I'm back out here at Pick Apart. Now I'm after these uh, flanges right here. I'm going to try to reuse the flanges um, instead of making my own set. And maybe from this set, I can have some water jetted out, you know, like multiple sets. Um, first, what I'm going to do is uh, pull the uh, bearing and seal out of here because I don't want them. And it'd be a lot easier to pull them out right now before I cut this off. What I'm going to do is take a I got a, my Sawzall, I would have loved to have had a, like a porta band with a battery and come back here and just cut this 
axle tube right off. That's all I'm going to do. And then take this home and then grind and get that flange off of there. I'm going to do both sides. Start with this side right here. All right, using a slide hammer. Here we go. Pull this out of here. Look at that, how easy that came out, huh? I got everything I needed for today. Uh, I'm gonna head back to the shop. And uh, well, it's 4.15, they close at 4.30. So I had to work fast. Uh, you know, I get off at 2.30 and rush home, grab everything I need, come down here and see if I can't get everything out of here before I, they kick me, before they kick me out of here. All right, see you back at the shop. Okay, what I, went ahead and did I uh, went ahead and ground this excess metal down you know this one here look more like that this one here I had cut it a lot closer uh, I'm gonna do uh, try a different method on this one here but anyway so I got it ground down using a uh, angle grinder and another thing I, I went ahead and did is took a measurement to see how far this plate has got to go back. And we got 48 millimeters. All right, I ran into a little snafu with these things here. You know, I ground this one completely down flush and now realizing that this sleeve inside here was part of uh, the axle tube. So when they put this flange on here, it was very easy for them because the axle tube had a step in it, a step down, where this just slid right over and then there was a stop. And all they had to do was clock this correctly and weld it on. So it wasn't about worrying about, are you getting that flange on there square? Like we're gonna have that problem. We need to make sure we're gonna get the flange on square because we're not gonna have that step down in the axle tube like they did. So anyway, I'm gonna take this over to a buddy of mine, uh, Scott. He's got like three lays a mill. He's got everything. And I'm gonna to try to lay this out of here. You know, put this into, a, into the jaws and take a cutting blade and cut this out. And hopefully end up with nothing but a flange. All right, well I'm gonna head over there. I'll meet you there. All right, now Scott started by cleaning up the back side of the flange here. Just taking off just a few thousandths of an inch to clean it up. It's cut now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's not all the way where it's clean, but it's cut it off if you want. All right, so yeah. now we want to cut this out. Right. I mean, so I'm thinking that maybe the way to do that is with the boring bar. 
Now with the boring bar attached, we're starting to remove the inside lip there. The one that I was talking about earlier, that actually turns out not to be that important. Um, that ridge that was inside the tube was just basically part of the machine part of the tube. It uh, really didn't have anything to do with how the flange was held on to the axle tube itself. Now where we should have been concentrating is right there in that area and went in about that far and stopped. But I mean no harm, no foul here. Now right here you can see where Scott's concentrating that boring bar is on just about uh, 3 16 inward and then going outward trying to remove the outside up to the outside diameter of the axle tube itself. And you want to take off, well, we're probably taking off about 25 thousandths at a time there. Now do you know what like diameter that you're cutting at right now? No, without measuring. Oh, okay. Boy, look how close we are. push that right out of the There it goes. Yeah. So it can be had. <laughs> well, I knew I brought it to the right guy. There we go. One down. Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> you got your flange then. Oh, so that'll work for both sides, huh? Okay, we're getting set up here to cut this other one. Now, the other one I had ground off. This one here, I got quite a bit of lip on here. Yeah, we're, we're just going to take that Yeah, off, we're right? just going to machine that down. Now that we know what we're doing here. Yeah, we got an idea how this all works. Yep. How much is that, like 25 thousandths there? Or? Yeah, 30. A little more aggressive. Yeah. And notice how we're getting chips now instead of long stringers. Uh-huh. In fact, it needs to cut a little bit harder. See how they're trying to string? But they're, yeah. They say if it's long, it's wrong. And that's Ooh. true. Sometimes I like to cut easy and I end up with those long strings. Well, that's the same with uh, running a mill, too. That it's, all, it's all feed and speed, yeah. 
This is going to be a little more aggressive. Maybe we'll get some chips on it. like that came out real sweet the more you do the better you get <laughs> Back home again. Man, I'm excited. We got these flanges out looking as good as they do. I mean, you cannot get better than that. Uh, I love the way these flanges also, with that lip right on there, how they fit right into the uh, backing plate. I mean, a perfect fit. So that's really cool. I love that. Now, I went ahead and Got the other side mocked up already. I got it tack welded in place. I'm expecting rotors tomorrow. And after getting it, you know, with the rotors and the axles back in there and making sure that the plates or these uh, flanges are in the correct location, then I'll weld it in 100% at that point. Now, <clears throat> so I want to give out a special thanks to Scott Werber for machining these out for me. He's always been there for me and helped me out whenever I need something like this. I, I really appreciate that, Scott. Thank you. And if you never subscribed to me before, please hit that subscribe button right down there and that little bell symbol right next to it. And that way you get notified the next time I upload a video. I'm also an Amazon affiliate. Please check out the links down below in the description where you can do all your Amazon shopping through one of those links. And the channel earns a small commission that way. Sure appreciate that. And those links are all tools and products we may have used in this video. All right. Well, so, like I was saying, subscribe and hit that bell symbol. And that way you'll see the next episode where we complete the uh, disc brake conversion. And then there'll also be uh, another episode where we're gonna have to make some mods to this Durango axle to get it into a Dakota. All right, well, we will see you on the next one.